Hello to all of my peeps. It's so good to see you here today from my chair, episode 78. I have some friends uh, to show you today. Uh, I've had my bestie the last three weeks. and uh, But let me show you some friends and see how they're doing. Here's J-Bug. Uh, some of you have told me, we're missing the friends. You're, uh, she's not, I don't know. She's just not doing so well. Um, she just looks kind of peaking and... I don't know, there's holes in her leaves, and again, I don't know about old J-Bug, but I'm, I'm doing what I can do with her. And then I went ahead and brought G-Bug also, and here's old G-Bug. She's doing booful, my spider plant, all big and booful. So, yes, we're doing, uh, uh, G-Bug's doing really good. J-Bug's, I don't know, just pray, pray for her. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, hanging, with, uh, hanging with me each week. As uh, we've been discussing the tough topics of uh, depression and anxiety, uh, I was looking back, and uh, this is the 23rd episode uh, that we've tackled these spaces together. Uh, one of the interviews, fun. Oh, you're so you're so sweet uh, to hang with us on those interviews. I, honestly, I'd like to once again uh, just publicly thank my bestie. Uh, Joanna for tackling tackling all this with me. They were so much fun. Uh, I've ho I hope and pray that you've taken some of some of the the things that she brought for us and 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 told us and talked to us about that you've you've sw made some swaps maybe uh, some things take some of those things and apply them to your life. These are tough spaces. Why well, now? I was thinking about this. These are tough spaces to walk through, and even tougher. Uh, to discuss with other people. Uh, so I'm so thankful. Once again, i got to tell her, I'm so tell, so thankful uh, for her willingness to do a really hard thing. Uh, I appreciate it greatly. Now for today, uh, and next week also, Lord willing, today, th this week and next week, I've, I've got some things to say to sandwich all of these uh, lessons on depression and anxiety. I want to sandwich them all together. Uh, and uh, there's some things that, that I've been thinking about all the way through this. Uh, they've been on my heart as we've been discussing depression and anxiety. Uh, grab your Bibles. I've got two passages to turn to today and then another one uh, hopefully for next week. Uh, let's jump into this. I want us, and again, these things have just kind of been weighing on my heart. I want to I wanna, uh, hand them to you and say, you know what, let's cap all this together into a few very important thoughts uh, that we can take with us and uh, just grab onto. First of all, uh, I want us, number one, to see yourself as worth investing into. See yourself as worth investing into. Can I just be real and uh, honest with you for a, a minute? Uh, I received a text. Uh, it was an amazing text, uh, a very convicting text. Uh, a few weeks ago from someone who loves me very much and that's why I could receive it as that. Uh, very, very convicting. Uh, but it was an amazing text. Uh, I need to share it with you. Um, because, and this is why. Because I feel like there may be somebody listening who fits into this line of thinking that we're talking about here. Seeing yourself as worth investing into. You say, what's the line of thinking, Miss Edge? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Take your Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse number 1. Ephesians 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy. Okay, pay attention to those two words. That you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Verse number two, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. As I read these verses, I'll just be straight with you today and real honest with you today. As I read these verses, I think uh, that in order to walk worthy and have lowliness and meekness, then I must totally neglect me and only pay attention to you and my investment into you. 
Now you say, oh, that's not how it is. Okay, that's fine. Then you're not in this group of, of, uh, of, of people that I'm talking to, this thought process that, that, I, that people like me go through. I feel like if you, gotta, if you walk worthy of the vocation then and lowliness and meekness, then I need to totally neglect me and uh, only pay attention to you and my investment into you. Walking worthy, it means that I can't care about my body or my mental state or my emotional stability. Uh, walking worthy means that serving Christ is all about me walking around feeling like garbage so that other people can be amazing. When in reality, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. Uh, as you read your Bible, especially, I, I love Psalm 139. Uh, I love it how we are fearfully, we're wonderfully made. He thinks about us. We're precious to Him. Uh, as I read that, in reality, I need to look at this walking worthy of my vocation. I need to view myself as a worthy investment. As a worthy investment. Here's what the text said. You're like, okay, it says, what did the text say? Okay, here we go. The text said this, and I quote, I think that you <clears throat> don't deem yourself worthy of the expense, but if you could just see it as an investment into God's kingdom. That's where I was. Honestly, I'll, just, I'll be straight with you. Miss Edge has been straight with you all along these many, many weeks. I've been straight with you. I don't pull any punches. Uh, I'm real straight with you. I have I go around and think that walking worthy of the vocation means that I totally neglect me. That that means I totally neglect me and only pay attention to those who I'm investing into. And I can't care about my body. I can't care about my, my mental status or my emotional stability but that, because that's too selfish. That's, that, that's looked at me too much. I need to look at you uh, more than I look at me. And that, that's fine. Yes, I want to uh, help other people and things like that. But you know what? I need to, in reality, see myself as a worthy investment into the kingdom of God. And I, I'll, I'll be straight with you. I'll be real honest with you. It has been a, a thought process for me. Uh, and it might be for you too. I don't know. I'm just handing this to you. Maybe you're like, I don't feel like that. I, okay, that's wonderful. But uh, for you know somebody like me, I, I'm not. I don't feel like a worthy investment sometimes. But I, I'm learning that. Hey, investing into me is investing into the kingdom of God. Uh, we often conduct our life like uh, you are worthy of my best and my all, but I'm not worthy enough to invest into myself, my health, my well-being, my mental and my emotional stability. I'd like to boldly say it again. I'm learning this. I uh, put people in my path that are teaching me this. So no, I have not mastered this. I'm working on it. Uh, but I'd like to boldly say you are worth investing into. You're worth investing into. Uh, when you take a walk, you're, that, that's you investing into you. You are a worthy investment. Uh, when you diffuse your oils, uh, you are investing into you. Uh, when you put your feet up uh, for a little bit after work, you are investing into you. Well, no, no, no. I got. I got to stay up. I got to. I got to go. I got to go. I just the other night, I told my fellas. I said, you know what? I can't. I can't. I can't go anymore. I've got to sit down for a little bit. So if y'all just be patient with me for a little bit, let me put my feet up. Uh, let me. Let me uh, have a little bit of drink. A little bit of uh, my. My son loves to make. Uh, a wa have water with cucumber and lime in it. And it's so good. Let me just have a little bit of that. Let me put my feet up, and then I'll get up and tackle uh, supper and laundry and things like that. When you do that, you're investing into you. Uh, when you pay a little bit more for that healthier snack, you're investing into yourself. You are a worthy investment. When, <laughs> when you refuse to let that person get to you, you're investing into you. People going to do what people going to do. People going to say what people going to say, but it's how you respond 
That, that's, that will ma that's what makes the difference. You invest into you. Refuse to let that person get to you. Uh, you know what? Taking time to read and study about your issues and, and your symptoms and things like what uh, Joanna was talking about the last uh, three weeks or so. Uh, doing your research. That's you investing into you. I don't have time to read all those books or read that website. I don't have time. Mm, no, no, no. Yes, you do. You and you take time to invest into you. See yourself as a worthy investment. When you take that slow, scenic route home, you're investing into you. You are. Whether you see where you see the cows and the beautiful trees. Uh, I don't know if you if you live where uh, in a place like we do, but uh, we have cows and and uh, and trees and and deer and and you, taking the scenic route home, the slower scenic route. Uh, that's you investing into you, um, spending some money on some good vitamins that are fit uh, for what you need and your needs and your health benefits. You know what? That's you investing into you. But says this stuff's expensive. I know it is. I know it is. Uh, but it is a worthy investment. You are a worthy investment. Uh, when you're sitting in Atlanta traffic or Chattanooga traffic, oh have mercy, or Nashville traffic or Chicago traffic, wherever you are, when you're sitting in traffic and you decide uh, to roll down the windows and sing, uh, instead of getting angry that you're only going five miles an hour, uh, you're investing into you. Uh, you are investing into you. It's October. It's October. Uh, pink is the color of choice, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know what? You invest into you and go get your scan done. Go get your scan done. Well, I don't believe in doing all that. Okay, well then go find the scan that you do, uh, that you can believe in, that you can do, and your body can handle. Go get your scan done. Get the early detection. Get that, get that done. What is that? It's you investing into you. Well, it's painful. I know it is. I got to get mine done too. It's October. It's what you do in October. Uh, but it's you investing into you. Uh, you invest into you by choosing the side salad instead of the fries. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, when you choose the healthier options, you are investing into you. But Miss Edge, it's a dollar and a half more. I know that. I know that. But it's you. You need to see yourself as a worthy investment. You know what? It's not selfish. To invest into you. I'm talking about investing. I'm not talking. Come on now. You know Miss Edge. I'm not talking about a lavish way of, of living. You know, you know. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about investing. I'm talking about you putting into you so that you feel better. You feel good. And, uh, and so that you can go tackle the day. Finding solutions to your physical and mental and emotional issues it's not selfish. It's not selfish. It's not a waste. It's not a waste. Uh, it's a worthy investment. You are investing into God's kingdom. See yourself as that. See yourself as that. In fact, it, it would probably do us all good, me included, to look inside that mirror and say, you know what? You are a worthy investment. You are worth investing into because you know what I found this when I uh, feel better about me I can minister to you far more effectively when I feel better about myself when I'm not feeling like garbage <laughs> come on now you know what I'm talking about get your halos off okay uh, when I feel better about me uh, I can walk into the Walmart with a smile on my face a real genuine uh, joy of Christ smile on my face. I can help others better when I put a when I when I pay attention to my body and I can help myself and do some things for myself. So I want us to look at ourselves as as a worthy investment. You are a worthy investment. You're worth investing into and not somebody else investing into you. You investing into yourself. Because really, you're investing into the kingdom of God. Uh, I love that. I want us to see ourselves as that. 
number two for today. And lastly, my second thought as I wrap all, sandwich up all these 20, 23 lessons or so about depression and anxiety. I love this. Take your Bible and turn to Psalm 138. <clears throat> Psalm 138. I love this. Psalm 138. Number two, let me say this. Don't wait for your struggle to be finished before you let God use it. Did you get that? It is. This has been so, so helpful for me. Don't wait for your struggle to be finished before you let God use it. Psalm 138. Again, somebody uh, texted me this, and uh, I have just chewed on it and loved it, and I've needed this so much in my dark spaces. Psalm 138, look at verse number 7. Though I walk, mark this, mark this piece. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. I'll come back to it. Let me finish the verses. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Go back to verse 7, the very first part. What I want you to mark is, in the midst of trouble, wait, 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 in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Don't wait for your struggle to be finished before you let God use it. We think that his removing us from trouble is where we will be revived. But God often has other plans. Uh, let me let me encourage us. Don't wait for your depression or your anxiety to be finished before you let him use it. Uh, just because you're struggling in dark spaces does not mean that you're on a shelf. <laughs> that you're a knick-knack on a shelf, all dusty until you see the light again. No, you're not a knick-knack on a shelf. Oh, dusty knick-knack. I had to get in here uh, the other day. In pa We're in pastor's office again, by the way. I love it in here for some reason. I feel I, I feel my husband. I feel the, the presence and power of God in the pastor's office. Uh, plus, I have an inroad, okay? Uh, but I love it in here. And I got in here the other day and started dusting off his knick-knacks and things. And you know what? Just because you're struggling in a dark space of depression or anxiety, that does not mean that you're an old dusty knick-knack on a shelf. Um, just because you suddenly have a hard time uh, being in front of people or, or having a hard time breathing. I, Joanna was talking about that the last three weeks. Just a hard time breathing. Or you can't sleep at night. Some of you are going through that right now. It's just sleepless nights. You just, that anxi it's anxiety. And uh, uh, that does not mean that you're sitting on a shelf collecting dust until you get better you feel better, or you find solutions. No, <laughs> it doesn't mean that at all. Uh, maybe you do sit in the car and cry for no apparent reason. I get that. I get it. I understand it. Uh, maybe your mind is constantly bombarded with, with melancholy and gloomy thoughts. Uh, maybe you are walking in a fog and just tired and exhausted all the time. It's part, it's part of the walking through depression. I get it. Uh, but that does not mean that God is placing you in a corner, in a timeout chair, until it's all figured out and you feel all better again. No. No. That, that's not how this works. God wants to use you. Watch. Right smack dab in the middle of our anxiety. He does. Did you hear that? God, your God, desires, wants to use you, to use me, to use us right smack dab in the middle of our anxiety, of our depression, our struggles. Uh, there is something for you to do for Christ in the midst of your struggle. Did you remember it? In the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Oh, when I get out of this, I'm going to be used of God. I'm going to finally be revived. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not how this works. He wants to use you right in the middle of it. But I don't feel very usable. It, it, it's okay. You watch. You let God take care of that. You just continue to be a usable vessel 
for the cause of Christ. Let him use you. Let him use you while you struggle. Did you get that? Let him use you while you struggle. Be a usable, willing vessel in your days of anxiety, in your PTSD diagnosis, uh, while you walk through the dark season of depression. There is still something that you can do for Christ. You don't have to be a dirty knickknack, a dusty knickknack shelved. Just something to look at. Just something to collect dust while we all get over our issues. I'm sorry. That's not how this works. Mm -mm. That's not how this works. God wants to use you. The Holy, sweet Holy Spirit of God wants to use you, desires to use you right in the middle of your struggle. There's still something that you can do for the cause of Christ. Honestly, something that I have found, just to be real straight with you, while I'm walking through, when I walk through the, my, the dark spaces of, of depression and things, something that I have found is it opens up a whole new avenue of service to Christ. A whole new avenue. Um, there's a group of people, there's a group of struggling people that I can minister to that I've never been able to minister to before. That's, that's being used of God in the midst of your struggle. Uh, Joanna, she taught my bestie. Joanna taught for three weeks about ex her anxiety. Uh, God has not shoved her on a shelf, like a knick-knack on a shelf. Oh, dusty Joanna sitting on a shelf. No, he's not shoved her on a shelf to collect dust. Uh, until her anxiety issues are done. Uh, no, in fact, you want the truth? Uh, her outreach has increased because of what she's been walking through. He, he's broadened it. Uh, every week, we'll go back and forth, and she'll t nearly every week, she'll say, so I, I ran into someone, I ran into somebody here some, at this dentist office or this doctor's office or the, the store. I ran into somebody, and they were talking about the, these, these uh, uh, symptoms and things that they're going through, and I'm like, I knew exactly what they were. And I was able to share with them some things that have helped me, and it opens the door to proclaim Christ. It opens the door uh, the Holy Spirit opens doors all the time uh, for both of us to proclaim Christ right in the middle of our struggles. And you know what? He'll do the same for you. He wants to do the same for you. He wants to look. You're, you're not just a dusty old knickknack. You're not just sitting in a timeout chair in the corner until it's all done. Okay, well, you know what? Some things are to be lived through for a pretty long time. So does that mean I have to sit on a shelf and never be used of God for years and years and years until we figure out what's going on? No. <laughs> no. That's not, the way, that's not the way God wants this. He wants to revive us in the midst of our trouble. Right in the middle of it. But we got to let Him. Are you struggling with depression and anxiety? Don't wait for that struggle, that trial, that dark space to be finished up before you let God use it. Uh, you're not on a shelf. I, I, this is an illustration I was thinking about. You're not on the island of misfit toys. Uh, I don't know if you like to watch that around Christmas, but sometimes I'll, I'll just be straight. Sometimes you're walking through these seasons and you just feel like you're on an island and you're just a misfit toy. That's not how this works. That's not how God intends for this to be. He intends for us to take our struggle, even how we feel, the depression, the anxiety, and say, you know what, right, even though you're in the middle of it, let me give you opportunities to use it for the cause of Christ. So let's see this as an opportunity to be used of God right in the middle of the tough days, the dark spaces, and I want us to get it in our core being. No joke. Get it in our core being and our core thinking that you are a worthy investment. You are a worthy investment for the cause of Christ. You are worth investing into. I have some more thoughts to give us to sandwich all of these lessons together before we start a new topic. And uh, But uh, I wanted to give you a couple of them today and I'll give you, Lord willing, a couple of them next week. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, but I want us to remember Lydia at 11 with leukemia. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, 
we sure do love you and uh, we're finding lord that lots of people are struggling especially women they're struggling. They, we do have these dark spaces, hormone issues. It's just rampant. People, uh, servants, your servants of uh, uh, that are going through, and, and they're just struggling with things. But, Lord, don't let us get the mentality that we're just poo-poo. We're nothing. Uh, Lord, we're precious in your sight. I pray that you would help us to invest into ourselves so that we can be better for you and be better servants for you. And then, Lord, as we go through uh, our struggles and our dark spaces, our anxiety, uh, our sleepless nights, uh, the, uh, the frustration, maybe the irritability, the things that we go through, I pray that you would help us to see that you still want to use us. We're not just a dusty knickknack on a shelf. You want to use us right smack dab in the middle of our struggles. And I pray that we would see that and pay attention to that and take great comfort in that, that you're not just throwing us on an island or in a corner or on a shelf. You want to use us, and you want to use our struggle also. Lord, I pray that you would continue to heal Lydia of her leukemia. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now go be amazing today.